may or may not fit and blend it down to the uh, pancake piece under there. If I get my finger in, I'll use my finger. I like my finger best because I can feel the clay. With a tool, you can't really feel the clay. It's kind of an extension, but not as, not as nice as my finger. And I'll do the same thing out here. I go around and press down and pull up on the, uh, the pancake piece to blend the two pieces together. You see how crude this is? And how it ends up, if you come up and look at these at some point, um, they're refined. And the way I refine it. But the next step first is to uh, pull that fat coil into a thin, thinner wall, which is what I call throwing in place because I'm not using a wheel. I squeeze in and up at the same time. And I can get sometimes another inch out of the uh, thickness. And he hates to build a board for me because um, in his case, everything is rough and okay. Um, in my case, I like to have my surfaces pretty smooth so I can paint. Yeah. With like a watercolor effect on the surface or more like an acrylic yeah, the work layers I on the surface. So for her, I have to smooth with the grid and I use a different clay usually because she wants to paint on it. Uh, my next step is to uh, use a serrated ridge to, now I'm going to blend these two together and start the form. And the form, I start at the very bottom and just pull up and what I'm doing is refining and smoothing all of those finger marks and lumps. And at the same time, I'm trying to figure out if this figure is gonna be leaning or be up on one toe or have an action type pose as opposed to just something uh, standing and whether or not I'm gonna have it have toes or shoes. So all those lumps have been smoothed pretty much. The nice thing about a serrated rib also is I can see the lines that, that are left with the serrated rib in it. And all those lines create little shadows in the light. So it gives you a good idea of if there are any lumps left. You can see them pretty easily. And does the question about painting on greenware versus this comes in? So you can apply on the ladies on um, a few ways. Under glazes, I raccoon fire these, which is a may or may not know that technique. Um, they don't get shiny, I don't put a clear over them, or I rarely put a clear over them. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I put a glaze in combination with the underglaze so that I can have some shiny spots or a color that um, is different that you can't get with underglaze, or I want to seal it more because the glaze acts kind of like a sealer. It, uh, like her clears. There's at least two. Yeah, there's probably about five. Five different, okay. Yeah, because there's a green, there's blue, there's an aqua, there's a purple, maybe two or three blues. And you can okay. see those the same blues, but um, on the female figure, it's shiny. And yeah, on this one. That one has that other uh, underglaze too on it that has the more flux in it. Are you using underglaze rather than glaze because yes. you don't want it to be shiny? Yes, I don't, you know, you don't walk around with shiny clothes, right? <laughs> Most of the time. Unless you're wearing patent leather, it's 1970. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I tried to do um, a long time ago, I was exposed to more glazes than anything else. So I thought, I don't like this because it's shiny. And that's just a, that's just a thing with me. You know, a lot of people do it and they use shiny glazes. So I decided I'm going to experiment, you know, and people, when I was learning, would say, you can't use glaze on a raccoon beetle. And I don't like the word can't. So I say, are you kidding me? I can if I want. <laughs> but I would suggest you experiment. So I underglaze I raccoon fire these, which is a may or may not know that technique. Um, 
they don't get shiny and I put a clear over them or I rarely put a clear over them. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I put a glaze in combination with the underglaze so that I can have some shiny spots or a color that um, is different that you can't get with underglaze or I want to seal it more because the glaze acts kind of like a sealer. It, it, uh, like her clears. There's at least two. Yeah, there's probably about five. Five different, okay. Yeah, because there's a green, there's blue, there's an aqua, there's a purple, maybe two or three blues. Ooh. And you can okay. see those the same blues, but um, on the female figure, it's shiny. And, um, yeah, on five, this one. Man, that one has that other uh, underglaze too on it that has the more flux in it. I forget the name of Are it. Are you using underglaze rather than glaze? Because yes. You Shiny. Yes, I don't, you know, you don't walk around with shiny clothes, right? <laughs> Most of the time. Unless you're wearing patent leather, it's 1970. Um, so yeah, one of the things that I tried to do um, a long time ago, I was exposed to more glazes than anything else. So I thought, I don't like this because it's shiny. And that's just a, that's just a thing with me. You know, a lot of people do it and they use shiny glazes, that's fine. So I decided, I'm going to experiment. You know, and people, when I was learning, would say, you can't use glaze on a rectum. And I don't like the word can't. So I say, are you kidding me? I can if I want. <laughs> but I would suggest you experiment. So can you just call it hand glaze? I 